walk in a fast lane. I'm a I'm a huge fan, huge Shocker fan. Uh, I'm really, really honored to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's let's get into it. The first uh, the first thing I want to discuss is the is the new album. I mean, you guys have a new album come out. It's coming out uh, June thirtieth. I'm really excited about it, Invincible. And I wanted to discuss the first two singles that you know that you guys have out. Um, I'm sorry, or or uh, tell her that I'm sorry. Sorry, about tell her that. that I'm sorry. Tell her about yes, I'm no sorry problem. is uh is the latest one that you know that that I've heard. I've been sharing it with the you know with our fans and everything, and it's uh it's really an excellent you know two songs that to introduce this album. Tell us about the new album and and what the fans have to expect coming up. So what the fans do uh, to have, have to expect it's it's always. Um... When you you when there's chakra written on it, there's chakra inside, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. But uh, it's not uh, that we don't try different things and um, and go a little bit outside of our boundaries, uh, but not too much, you know. So we have some songs on it um, that are a little bit more experimental, like uh, uh, the Matrix on Falls, uh, or right. um, or um, which was the other one, uh, <laughs> uh, Walls of Hate, uh, for example. Um, but we try to to make a, a good uh, mix of hard rock and metal music, you know. So we have uh, from the both uh, worlds, we have uh, stuff in it. And we try to, to make an album that you can listen from the first track till the last track. And there is no... Uh, a boring moment you know <laughs> I, hope we, I hope we achieved it <laughs> you guys definitely achieved it you know exactly. when i you know when i look at the at the album and, and some of the tracks like like house of rock is is vintage yep. chakra i mean i love that you know it's always like uh you know here it is in your face and 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 you're going to crank it to 11 and then then you have a song like walls of hate like you just you just said right there and i get the um it kind of has like that Zeppelin uh, immigrant song kind of groove to it in spots. That's a, that's a great song. Tell us about that. Yeah, we, we got a lot of influences from uh, bands that we like. Um, and um, the, these are also influences from uh, from Zeppelin as well. Yes, of course, because every rock band has an influence from, from them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, um, but the song is... Um, when I when I was writing the lyrics for the song, it was was more like um, how people react uh, on each other on um, online, you know, and social media and stuff like that. Because these are the walls of hate uh, for me, so right. they, uh, they don't they they have to feel them because they are in a kind uh, in a anonymous space. They they can do whatever they want and then and, and play with the feelings of other people and uh, i don't think that's a good thing uh because if okay. if they if if you are face to face to someone you don't do that to you and then um, i often see that this is a bashing and 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 um, yeah it's like you, you write something that someone comes you're an asshole <laughs> yeah that has right, nothing right, right. To, nothing to do with what you've wrote it's just like boom <laughs> and, and i, I I don't know why people have to act like this because it, it's yeah it's perhaps it's a uh, inner aggression or stuff like that but uh, yeah that's the story of, about the lyrics the, um, the song was written by Thomas um the rhythm guitar player um and he has good have much influences from um Rush or um Dream Theater and I think you find that uh, uh two in that in that song yeah you know what's nice is, is always about shocker is is you guys have uh you know every album is like you said in the beginning you know start to finish there, it's all killer no filler you know I, i've been listening to, you, to to the band since 2001 you know so it's oh, yeah? uh cool. it's been a it's been a great great uh what 22 years now listening to you guys yeah <laughs> so that's, that's fantastic well, with this album, it's a it's an excellent follow up to uh, to Mad World, which I thought was a great album. And when you when you release Mad World, obviously during the pandemic, you know, COVID and everything was was kind of holding everybody back. 
when you wanted to, to write this one, what was the what was the difference? I mean, were you guys you guys had to be mega hungry to get back back in because you probably really didn't have enough, you know, time to even push it, you know, the the Mad World album properly back then. Yeah, that was a real problem because we we released Mad World and we were uh, prepared to go on stage and to to promote the album, but uh, right after we right after we released the album. There was the stop from the pandem pandemic and then uh, yeah nothing worked anymore and uh during this time this uh, two years about two years uh we said at, at the fir at first we said okay we wait a little bit and we see what what happens because nobody knew what will happen um, will it go away uh, fast or will it be a long long story but uh as it turns out, it was a long story, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but then after after time, we said, OK, we we can do two things. We can sit here and uh, be bored or we can do new songs uh, and make a new album and uh, we can make the best of it because this was a situation we never had before. You have no deadline. You can just just make songs and record them and, and and you have nobody who comes and says okay you, you have to be finished till next month or next year or stuff like that and this was quite a a, a new experience for us because you always have the the, the label or the management or right. anybody's right. coming yeah hey okay we got to do something <laughs> exactly yeah and so um we really yeah, we took we took it easy, and and uh, Thomas and Tom they they wrote some uh, good stuff, some good songs, riffs, uh, and then we we tried it. We tried the melodies, and uh, I made the lyrics, and and it was really like a take your time. It will be uh, like uh, we make songs, 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 and when we when we say okay, there, there's nothing left inside of us, then we're gonna choose the the best ones, and then we're gonna t put it on the album, on the new one. And and uh, cool. yeah, it was it was um, after after a long time we could go back on stage. For um, fortunately, um, and we really enjoyed that time. But I think Mad World was a little bit under under pushed. Yeah. It's tough coming off the, you know, the pandemic and a lot of the bands I talked to, same way, you know, just, uh, you know, you come off and you're so used to that, having that high, you know, being on stage and then having all that cut up. And it seems like, you know, with this album, and, and I wanted to ask you about the, you know, the writing process of this album, like when you go into the studio and, and you said it a little bit earlier, there has to be a mega comfort, you know, you guys have been working you know, so long together. What's it like the recording process going into a shocker album? Give us a little, a little insight on that. So it's it's one by one. You know, that's first first we we record the drums and then we 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 put everything on on top. So, so first the drums, then the bass, then the guitars, then the voice, and after all the solos, um, the guitar solos and uh, and some ad libs and stuff that that we think yeah it would be would be nice to have on it um but it's not all it's not the whole band in the studio and and jamming and stuff like that we we just we, right. we go to studio if if we have finished the songs you know it's not um that we 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 already know how they sound we have we may have, uh, we've made a pre-production for the songs so they they really uh, before we go to studio, they sound like they should. So, <laughs> and then we re-record right. yeah. it. <laughs> so, but sometimes it's like, okay, the pre-production sounded better than, <laughs> than the album. No, 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 not the sound. But but sometimes you have something special, um, a special moment, and you don't have to, you don't find that afterwards. But that's right. Right. that's only for yourself. That's not uh, something that that the people will. Um, remark or stuff yeah that that's cool and you know when we we talk about that you know the the studio and 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 how things are different nowadays you know having a band you know all in different areas and one guy does his part and and sends it to the other guy what's the you know the the, the process i mean when you guys come up with a song you know you as a songwriter is it a 
Is it a melody that you come up with? Is it a riff? What's the what's the foundation? You know, when when Mark Fox goes in to write a song. Yeah. I'm waiting for the riffs from the guitar players. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that's that's important. It's not a music. We, we don't we don't start with the melodies and then uh, arrange the guitars around it. It's it's more the opposite. It's really like guitars have to be good. It has to, has to be catchy and and all that good stuff. And uh, if that is there, so you can you can just put. A, a really good melody on it and then it's it's really like a it's putting putting the the cherry on the on top yes that, <laughs> but, that's so so it's it's almost every time it's the same it's like uh thomas or tom the one of them um, they write songs 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 and then we come together and we try some melodies on it and yeah that's the process we we, we do and we have uh if we try the melodies, we have uh, lyrics, but they don't mean anything. So I, I write some words or sentence, and um, they don't mean anything. They sound um, they sound English, but makes no sense. <laughs> and that's uh, that's a real challenge uh, afterwards because they are, the, the words you take for the lyrics afterwards you have to they have to sound like. Uh, the stuff you you already sung with blah blah and right. <laughs> yeah it, because if they don't you, you don't like it that's the problem you you are used to hear it like that afterwards and then <laughs> yeah, that, that that's cool i'm always like i said i'm always interested in in how the uh you know the bands write the music and mm. and that because it, it makes me a better listener you know i i, I look at it as hey, you know, this is the first time I've heard it as a fan. But then after hearing, you know, the way the band say, "Hey, we wrote it like this," you know, then I have a different perspective. So it's yeah. it, it's always great to you know to hear how you guys do it. Yeah, you know, and it's interesting because I think it's not not in every band the same uh, process. So there there are a lot of bands I know they they just go into the rehearsal room and they jam till they have the songs. Um, right. When I myself make uh, songs for me for my solo project and stuff, uh, I write. I, I don't write the. I don't make riffs or something, and and the, I start off with the melody for me myself. But in Chakra, we make it other way, other ways. Yes. And, and I re I really like what you guys do all the time. And I, I like I said, I've been listening since uh, you know two thousand one, and the way I, the way I look at Chakra. You know, since then was was two bands stand out to me, and it's a great mix of of like ACDC and Dirty Looks for the modern era. That's that that's that's what I have when I think of you guys because you have that. There's a special formula in this band, and you guys have that special sound. What what's it kind of like? I guess the best way to explain it is what makes Shocker have that that vintage sound because nobody sounds like you right now. And and it's been like that since since I first heard you in two thousand one. Well, I don't know. I I think we we want it like that. It's 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 like uh, uh, you have your your heroes from the past. Uh, they sound like that, and you want to make something in this direction, but you don't want to to be the same. You want you want your own identity, uh, so that everybody who listens to the song and for the first three seconds knows okay this has to be chakra that that's right. our goal that's what that's what we want because we don't want to be a band that sounds like every every everybody else um, right. and surely we don't want to sound like acdc but right. if we sound a little bit like acdc there's nothing wrong with it <laughs> exactly exactly and that's that's what that's what makes the band stand out. I think so much for me is is you don't sound like anybody. You have your own style, and I, I think that really is, has carried you know across from you know like I said since I heard Power Ride back in two thousand one all the way up until now. It's just it's just a great great um, definitive sound that you have. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, I, I don't think it's it's the end of the sound because tom uh, is also our producer our lead guitarist uh he's uh, always trying to make it better and um, and to to make 
even more better guitar sound and even more better drums and uh, yeah he's always <laughs> always trying stuff and uh, but he has really like um, a vision how it should sound and and that's the reason why it sounds like that yes that's great and you know we were talking earlier you know like i said the first time i heard you was you know obviously shock with 2001 but when you stepped in in in, in 2003 you know with uh with power ride i mean after power ride yeah and, and, and pete left the band tell us about that because i remember the first time i heard you you know on rising and i thought wow that's a great transition and it, it seemed like the band really took that big step you know it was like hey the new guys here you know we're really gonna really launch this and you know, you had great songs on that album too, like My World and, and Done Me Wrong is one of my favorites. Tell us about how you got started in Shocker back in, in 2003, because it, it seems like it was forever ago, but man, it still sounds great to this day. <laughs> Thanks. Nice to hear that. <laughs> uh, yeah, this was, I was 21 years old uh, then, and, and when I joined the band, I was was like, wow, we do everything, we're gonna, we're gonna rule the world with our music, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, 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 uh, yeah, that's how you think when you're a young musician, and you have full, uh, you are full of power and emotion, and, and go out right. and, and give it to the people, and this was really a, a good time, but a hard time, uh, a lot of work, um, and we we had really really a good uh, push um, at that time. I think it was it was the the mix of the right songs at the right time. And uh, yeah, it's sad for the for the for Pete that he had to left uh, to leave the band. But um, for me, it was an opportunity, and I always wanted to sing in a in a band like that. And I made my own stuff. Um, rock style um it was um i had my acdc cover band i had my yeah you know i make my little shows in the pops and stuff <laughs> and, right, right, right. But, but this was this was something else for me because i, I joined the band i was right like what you, you really want to have me as a singer it was a surprise for me um because there were other i know there were many other there that tried to to join the band and um yeah, my first concert was at the Bang Your Head Festival, Bang Your Head Festival in Berlin, in Germany, in front of twenty thousand people. So this wow. was a little bit for me. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was like okay. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Yeah, That's it. Yeah, the the, the the last concert I made before that was was in front of twenty or thirty people. You know, <laughs> at the in a bar or stuff like that. Good job. And, uh, job. Yeah, it was it was really a huge jump, and but it was it was great. It was really great to to stay there on stage and and see all these people and and hear. This is mighty, you know, what you hear on a stage with with such an audience. That's. And it's it's nowadays it's the same. If you have um, have this audience, you have like uh, the goosebumps everywhere. It's uh, it's not. Oh yeah, we know that. <laughs> it's like <laughs> wow, <laughs> and the heart pumps, you know. But right. um, yeah, and then we we had a lot of success here in Switzerland. We tried to to go further, 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 and um, yeah. There are things um, we had done better, maybe or maybe not. You know that everybody has has his way, and, and you can't say if you if you did something else, uh, it would be better now. I'm I'm very happy with how how it is nowadays. But uh, uh, yeah, of course, uh, big it always gets uh, can be bigger. You know, <laughs> right? You guys and, get more. Uh, and, and you are talking from the USA to me, so <laughs> that's not uh, not not everybody in Switzerland can say that from his band, you know. <laughs> see, that's great. It's good to, to see that you guys, you know, are getting that reach too. You know, I know a lot of people here really love Shocker, and like I said, I've been listening since two thousand one, and uh, and and you see the, the 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 progress of the band, you know, going from that time up until now. I mean. You, you you've maintained that consistency but you've also you also still have that 
you know, the growth in the band too. It's not like the band stays stale. It's it's like every album gets gets better and better and better. Yeah, that's what we want. We, we don't want to stand still. It's um, and and everybody of us has um, knows what what he could do better. I'm working on my voice. The the guys working on their sound on their guitar sounds all the time, you know, and the, the drums or stuff. Uh, everybody's working on on his uh, his skills, and uh, I think that's that's something that never ends because if you if you are happy and and it's good enough for you then it's over i think it's 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 like right, okay right. and what's next there's nothing you know <laughs> if you say if you say i can do better there's always a going going further and that's it and and, and the bands that are you know their best always have that hunger i mean it doesn't matter how long you're in the business and, and playing yeah I mean, like you said, you started and you got into this band when you were 21, you know, and and the way you progressed all the way through it, you, you still hear that hunger too. Like you said, that hunger in your voice, the the, yeah. the power behind the songs, and and it's great for us as fans. Yeah, that that's also a point. If we have great fans uh, all over the world, and uh, and that's that's one of the biggest motivations you can have if 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 there are people out there. Uh, who like what you're doing and wait for the next uh, album or song um, to come out that's always a, a great motivation and you you want to you want to bring it out and you want to hear from them is it good for you is it okay is it do you like it or <laughs> right, right, right. hey you really like um, and now it's 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 the new album is coming out soon, so it's for for us. It's like okay, the new baby is coming. What what our fans will say? <laughs> what what they <laughs> what they are going to say? We don't know yet, but yeah, I think they will like it. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody's going to be really happy. You know, we yeah. were talking, you know, back you know after when you started, obviously with Rising, and and you went through, and you and you put out you know a lot of albums all the way up until you know the. Uh, the Everest album and and you left the band for for a few years yeah. and then when you came back with with high noon which was I remember that very well because I had that album the day it came out and um uh, you know when the track hello obviously was was really you know it was a it was a hit for you guys but I I thought that uh you know you coming back and I know at least from a fan's point of view that everybody was very excited because there was a lot of buzz in the media, hey, Mark's coming back, you know, and 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 here's the song, you know. Tell us about that about that moment right there when you when you left and came back. What was that like for you? <clears throat> yeah, this is a special time. Um, I was a young musician. The the other ones are a little bit older than me, and they had much more experience than me in this whole business and 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 as a young guy you always know better that, <laughs> that's right. something that's true <laughs> so i i was not always um the same uh, I, I, I thought we could do stuff other um, different than they wanted to do it and uh, uh yeah that's not good that gives gives uh, pressure in the band and um, this was yeah. after after everest it was really like uh, nobody wants to talk to each other and um, especially with me <laughs> because the band itself it, it they worked good uh, together but but with me it was like uh, okay the, the it was like how do you say that um pressure yeah just pressure and uh yeah friction okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And um, yeah, so I left the band because there was no possibility that uh, this situation would come better. And also, I wanted to make my own experience. I had my own songs. I had my own um, ideas how to do this uh, business stuff and, and stuff and, and all that around around music. Um, and yeah, it was a great time. I made two two albums. The, they were very successful here in Switzerland. They didn't reach uh, much outside, but the, this was number two in Switzerland. I thought, uh, I think um, so. That's not bad for a, for a first oh, album. <laughs> so, and after that, um, after those two albums, the 
Thomas, uh, yeah, there, there was John was leaving the band, and uh, Thomas was uh, was uh, uh, was searching for a new. But he no, he he didn't want to search a new singer. That was the point. He he wanted because this is always like beginning from the scratch. And you don't know the person who is coming, and you don't know you don't know what will happen with this person. You know, this right. was a little bit the fear of him because, and and he tried. Uh, he he talked uh, with Chris von Rohr from Crocus, and he, he's a good friend of mine. Um, that he could talk to me to perhaps we can fix something. <laughs> right, right, mend some fences. Yeah, yeah, and and this was was great because that showed me that. These people can uh, can really go outside of himself and and on and, and, and forget about all that was and 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 we met we met each other and we we talked like like you and me we talked and was was quite a good talk. So we decided to not involve the band to to make some songs and then involve the band with the songs. You know, that's right, much that's... more powerful. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> So we wrote the first, the first song we wrote was Hello. And um, the band was like, uh, okay, what's happening here? Uh, Thomas is coming with Mark. Okay, it is, he's showing us Mark as a new singer. What's, what's going on here? <laughs> and it was quite, we had quite a lot of discussion after that uh, with each other. And, and then we said, hey, why not? We all made mistakes and we all want the same. So why right. don't try it again? And that was good. Until then, we have a much more better relationship uh, between the, the band members and uh, we have much more fun. That's, that's obvious. And that's really great. If, if you're doing music with, uh, with other people, you, you have to, to have fun with them. You, if, you, if we don't like them, it's, it's, it's quite not possible. That was like uh, when I left the band, it was like staying on stage with Thomas. It was like, oh, this guy. <laughs> this <Right>. guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we made that new album and uh, mm. and it was great for, for the people. I, I think uh, John was a good singer. Uh, mm. I really liked how he sang my songs live i was on one concert of my own band you know <laughs> not everybody can say that and that was great and that i could cool. i could hear how he's singing my songs and it was like cool he made a really good job and uh, and he's a good guy i i met him um, for two or three times and, uh, and he's a he's good a good guy and but he uh, didn't want to make music anymore so this is right he stopped making music after chakra yeah, it's sad uh, because he has a good voice. Right. But yeah, if it's his way, it's his uh, his ways like that. It's it is. It's the way it is. <laughs> like the song, you know. Right, exactly. <laughs> you uh, you to, can't change that. Yeah, you get to that. You get to that stage, like I like you just said. You know, when you get to, you know, you work with people, and and everybody's different. You know, everybody wants to do something a little bit different. And, you know, you, you see those different possibilities and, and, and sometimes, you know, it, it, it's, you see a lot of bands that they, they can last maybe one or two albums before they break up, but you guys, yeah. you know, you brought that chemistry back and, and, and ever since that album right there, and, and obviously when Hello came out, it, it exploded, but the band has, has really come, you know, full circle. You guys just continue to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And, and I think that's what we see as fans out of shock. I mean, every time I hear you, it's something new. It's like, wow, it, you guys never slowed down. That's that's great to hear that. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe it was important that uh, that that I quit because we, I, I could see this, the thing things from a distance, and I could see that not everything was so bad you know and the, and the same happened to to the, the other guys in the band so it's, it's it's i think that's often a thing that uh 
people who work together don't do. They they go and they they quit. They go and they never look back. And that's the problem. Um, right. I'm not a guy that always looks back. But when you can look back on good things and and forget for one moment about all the bad stuff, and and when the good stuff overweighs the bad stuff, there's always. Uh, right a good, good chance that it will be much better afterwards if you come together again. Yeah, and I think band. when I think there are many bands that quit after two albums or even after one, um, it's not always because they uh, don't like each other anymore or stuff. Um, I think it's they always want to reach something. And if the goal is, is, is not reached, then they quit that's yeah it's not it's not that they try again because they they make something new and try again the same goal and it's it's always like this is a oh it's the same circle they they right. they're doing and yeah maybe maybe someday it will work for them but i think if you work always on the same goal with the same people so there are more possibilities that that it will be uh, achievable right i agree i totally agree and that's a that's a good thing that you guys you know came to to you know to work things out because you know it's uh it was obviously a great chemistry you know and then you know you then you had a little glitch you know where john stepped in obviously and but then, you know, sometimes the, you know, the best things of life come together, they find a way. And, and I think that's what yeah. you guys really did here. It was a, a, a great union. To, to yes. Have and, 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 and we, we know each other very good. That's, that's, uh, that's a point that, that helps a lot. Um, when you're talking how you want to gonna plan uh, the next tour or the next album or stuff uh, someone has an idea the other says okay um i know what you're thinking you know you know what the other one is thinking and that, that that's great because you can uh, uh it's 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 not i have another idea uh different ideas it's i have an idea to complement your idea that's that's a great thing right. you feed off of each other for yeah. sure you know you was a you was a vocalist. I, I always loved it, you know, your voice because it's a it, it has the power, you know, that raw aggression, but it also has, you know, the the melodic side to it. And and you've stayed consistent over the years too. I you know, it, it seems like you're not only, you know, staying consistent, but you get stronger. What are yeah. what are some of the things you do as a vocalist to uh to keep yourself in check? I mean, it, it, is it is it something that you Hey, I do these exercises. I practice these things. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I I don't make exercises or stuff like that. Um, I sing a lot. I sing a lot when I'm um, at home, when I'm working something, and um, when I go out with the dogs. Uh, I'm I'm singing, always singing. That's that's good. To, that's good for your voice. That it's trained. It's always trained, you know. Right. And I stopped. I stopped uh, drinking alcohol. That's one thing. And I stopped smoking. That's the other thing. And if you right. if you do that, you will will, will uh, immediately remark that the voice gets stronger and bigger. And uh, that's yeah. Give it a try. I don't know if you drink alcohol or smoke, but <laughs> if you I do, don't, don't I, do I it. Don't. I do. <laughs> You know, just uh, recreation. Just occasionally, we'll go out and we we go yeah, out. Yeah, okay. And I'll, and I'll have yeah, it's not a it's not a regular thing though. Yeah, but I'm not a vocalist yeah, either. So, <laughs> yeah, as a vocalist, I, I was a long time. I was a bad vocalist in um, a bad behavior. Um, I had a bad behavior for a vocalist, and every every other guy who who was vocalist from other bands uh said hey what you're doing? You you're ruining your your voice. And I said no, it does it doesn't matter it, it it sounds like that yeah of course but it it right. went good till now but but you don't know <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe you break it um two weeks after that you know it's better to be a little bit uh yeah at my parties i had my fun and now it's good <laughs> right <laughs> you know what I, I listen I, unfortunately i never got to see you guys live Obviously, you know, being in the U.S., which I hope one day happens to see you yeah, guys. Yeah, we hope we hope so too. It it never happened uh, uh, because when 
when there's a promoter in USA um, that wants us to 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 make a concert, um, it's always one show, and we can't uh, we can afford to come for one show to your country because it, it's it's too expensive, you know. Exactly. <laughs> not your yeah. not your country, just to just to come there and uh, with the crew and everything that the flights and and the hotels and the, that's uh, that's costly. It is. It's tough. If, but, but if there's a promoter out there who makes a, a little tour for us, yeah, why not? <laughs> we can talk about that. It would definitely because be. I, 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 I'm, I've never been to the USA myself, so I'm, I'd really like to one day. Yeah, we definitely love to have you here. So I, I, I listen to you know the band obviously live on on YouTube where I get to catch the, you know the, the live footage. Yeah. And there's a lot of bands that you know that hey they don't they can't replicate what they do on album but you guys really do well as far as a live back I mean it you know the we, sound's huge and it, it's very clean too I mean you sound great live we try we try our best to to sound like on the albums you know that's that's one of our goals when we play live we, we don't want to make a, an interpretation of our songs um, we want to give what the people love on our songs. We want to give them um, life too, not only on on the album. So uh, we're doing quite good. It can be better. <laughs> it can always be better, you know. But these these are also uh, yeah. That's that's how you feel today. Is, is the voice better or not so good? And yeah, it depends. It's it's not always the same life. So that's life. That's the problem. <laughs> right. That's it. It's tough. You know, just yeah. depending on weather, like, because you have the outdoor festivals and you never know what you're going to get. But you, yeah. you also, the, the band brings excellent backing vocals too. You know, and I think that's one of the things that I really heard is, you know, you can, you can really, you know, copy it live and, and, and really, you know, bring the, bring the album experience to the fans. You guys do it very well. And it's very important for me because I'm a big fan of Steven Tyler or um, or Meatloaf or um, guys that always have these big chorus or or, or good good um, second voices um, because this is really important. I'd, yeah, I, I like it when it's big, you know, and and and, and when it's scrubbing the two voices are scrubbing on each other you know it's like or uh, rubbing rubbing is the better word and right. that 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 it 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 it, uh, it makes it, it awakes emotions in you that's right right and it, and you definitely do it and that, that was one of the things that i i wanted to bring up was you know who were some of your influences you know, as a, as a vocalist, I know you said Steven Tyler and Meatloaf, but what about somebody that's uh, like kind of outside the box, maybe not a, a metal or hard rock vocalist that you that you uh, have as an influence that you that somebody we maybe we wouldn't expect that it would be somebody you would you would enjoy. Influence uh, influences are, yeah, I don't know. I, it, I, it, indeed, it are all these. Um, guys uh, steven tyler or axel rose or uh but i i also like voices like johnny cash and, and um i like frank sinatra as well uh, that's cool I, I adore frank sinatra it's really cool um but it's not an influence i can't use it like that but yeah maybe johnny cash with his uh, raspy um rough roughness yes a little bit but <laughs> yeah but, but but i'm very open what i what i listen to so um um blues uh, country um yeah maybe maybe it influences but i don't know it yeah yeah just yeah just listen because it, it like i said it, there's a lot of, of variation in what you do and and that's why you know i always ask you know what who are the influences and like I said I listen to the the music a little bit better but I like your I like the style that you bring to this too it's a like I said it's a it's a good heavy style but it's uh Thank you. you know it, it, it's raw but in in a great way it's it, it's it, it just comes off well to the fans and and it fits the music perfectly it really does 
Yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, <laughs> yeah, you can you can do with your voice what the voice wants to do. You know, you can train it. You can, yeah. But the voice sounds like the voice you have. You can't change it. That's the organ you have here. It is. It, so, it's like it is. <laughs> so what, what yeah, about? Yeah, maybe nowadays you can with uh, with uh, AI or stuff. You can deep um, deep fakes and then. St That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or or ChatGPT use uh, uh, use ChatGPT Chat to to make some new songs. <laughs> no, never, never. <laughs> Change it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, when you when you look back, you know, you've been doing this obviously for a while. Like you said, you got into chakra when you were 21. And you know, what are some of the things that you're most proud of when you look back on, you know, not only this band, but the things you've done in your musical career? Uh I'm proud of doing what I want and, and not listening to anybody outside who, who says, hey, you should do it otherwise. Because uh, there were a lot of people who, who told me, ah, oh, do that, do that, do that. Would be better for you. It would be better for uh, money. It would be better for whatever reason. And I did my, th my, I did my thing my whole life and I always achieved what I wanted to. Um, and uh, I always showed the people what I'm able to. And uh, so that's that's everything for me. I, I can proud I can be proud of it because um, nobody can say um, you're doing something wrong because every time I do something, it works out. Maybe it's it's it, uh, it's a little bit longer, but it works out in the end. And you stay you stay true to yourself too. You know you you, you have a certain thing that you want to do and. There's that sense of pride, and you, you, like I said, you don't sound like anybody else. It's not like you're, you know, you're ripping anybody else off. You know, you're yourself. I and mean, when I hear you sing, I know it's Chakra. I know it's you, and and, and I love yeah. what you're doing, man. I, I, I just hope you guys continue for another fifty years. As long <laughs> yeah, as you can, man. <laughs> yeah, 50, 50 would be a little bit too much because, uh, yeah, in fifty years, I'm, I would be uh i'm what now 44 so in 50 years <laughs> 94 and and the other guys so thomas is uh 15 years older than me so <laughs> and, and uh, roger as well uh, i don't i don't think that will work out but uh <laughs> as long, at least as long as you can though at least yeah yeah of course Th that that's for sure <laughs> that is that's, that's great but you know when you when you uh you know obviously the new album hits on on a, on June thirtieth, uh, Invincible for everybody that's listening. This is a great album. I've listened through it multiple times. Vintage Chakra. I mean everything that you expect. You know when you see that, like you said in the beginning of this interview, when you see that logo, you know what you're going to get. Yeah, and, and I think that says so much about this band. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a great publicity, you know, when you see this logo. That's it. <laughs> yeah. All we need maybe, is... Maybe I'm going to use that. Uh, maybe... <laughs> we so need to get one of those movie ones... guys to say it. Yeah. When you see yeah, this logo. Yeah, of course. How is he called? He's uh, Luke. I'm your father. How That's is he it. called? <laughs> He's... Darth Vader, yeah. Yeah, no, no, but the guy who's who's uh, who's with that voice, who's, who's oh, the guy? Uh, James Earl Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's this it. one we need That's this one. <laughs> if you see this logo, <laughs> you got to work on that. Tell tell Thomas to get working on that. Okay, see if he can get him in there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be great. So, you know, like I said, album comes out on on June thirtieth. What what what's next for Chakra? I mean, once the album comes out, do uh, you guys have shows planned? I mean, what's the What's the, uh, the the plan for the rest of this year? Yeah, we got we got shows, we got summer shows, we got festivals. We're gonna play, and we have uh, club shows in uh, in Europe um, in uh, fall and winter. So that's that's uh, about we would do it anytime, and because uh, it's it's 
the album comes out and we go and play and uh, often we we play in the same locations we've been the last time and that's really like uh, coming home to people yeah. that we know and uh, yeah it's it's always great fun it's it's always uh, like uh, yeah having a party together and yeah cool. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it I'm hoping that, that, that eventually somebody gets you here to the U.S. Because, like I said, I'd love to see you guys after being a fan for for so long. But it's, uh, you know, I, I want to say, you know, in closing here that uh, I want to say thank you for doing what you do for so long. I mean, like I said, I've been listening to you since 2003. You know, you guys are one of my favorite bands, consistent. You know, I, I, I know what I get there. But uh, but but thank you for doing what you do because I, I love listening to you and it's it's been such a big part of my life, and and having a chance to talk to you and having you on the show, man, is 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 pretty I cool for me. It's it's, it's very special. <laughs> I appreciate it. Cool. So, uh, uh, in closing here, uh, let everybody know June thirtieth, Chakra Invincible, absolutely in incredible songs, you know, incredible album, just uh, just what you expected, you know, from this band. How about any last words, Mark? Anything you want to get out to the fans? Yeah, of course. Uh, stay tuned and listen to the new album and get invincible. There's no doubt about it. I know I will be. <laughs> All right, Mark. Thanks. Thanks for joining and talking to Fastlane. You know, I'd I'd love to thanks have you. Thanks for having on me. I'd love to have you on again at some point. You know, whenever you guys have something new coming out. Cool. Um, yeah. We'll connect again. And and like I said, I appreciate you. And everything that you do, man. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you, too. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark.